I fear that my satisfaction with how I adjusted the neck angle by sanding on the body rather than the face of the heel may have been premature. When I went to calculate the height of the bridge, it came up woefully short. I've just spent an hour sanding a perfect wedge off the bottom of the fretboard, nothing at the body end, perfect straight line down to a millimetre off at the nut. If there is to be any suspense in this series of videos, it will be, was it enough? I'm getting about six and a half mils here and just lifting it up the weight of the guitar and the clamps takes it down to six. We need to add 1.2 mils for the frets so I think I will cut the bridge to be 7.7 I was hoping for nine. Going to be shaping the bridge now uh, by doing a contour across the top and then thinning down the wings. I've drawn myself some lines to follow. I'll finish this off by hand. I went a little bit too far on one of those cuts and then tried to even it up on the other side and ended up making it worse. That's the thing about handmade pieces. Every single one is unique. And 
course, if I hadn't told you that I'd gone too far on one of those cuts on the band sander, would you know? What does it even mean? It will not surprise you, in fact you've probably already worked it out for yourself, that I've skipped a couple of steps. Ain't no pins gone fit through them holes, huh? I've used a countersink bit to create depressions so that the larger drill bit will seat itself correctly. I'm scalloping the bottom of the bridge by putting a curve sideways and I'm also going to be scooping out some of the middle lengthways as well. This is so that when we glue it to the soundboard I'm going to be using bolts through the bridge pin holes to clamp and I want the edges to be pressed down as hard and not just the centre. I'm also hoping that it'll encourage the soundboard to have very, very slight dome profile. This is sometimes called magic tape. It's got a matte surface which means you can draw on it very easily with pencil. This is called a saddle-matic. I've replaced the rod with a longer one so that I can make acoustic bass guitars. There's a slot in this movable piece and at the head there are two angled spikes protruding. I've got a fret hammered into the twelfth position. I filed off the barbs so that it comes in and out easily. I put the groove along the fret, loosen the screw, and then just come in so that the head is absolutely flush with the end of the fretboard. Then we can do up the screw. And we flip it around and we place the two spikes in the near edge of the slot that we cut for the saddle. That gives us the longitudinal placement of the bridge. It takes care of the differential compensation for the different string gauges. For the lateral position I've lain two rulers against the fretboard and I just position the bridge so that the bridge pinholes are nicely centred between the rulers. Once I'm happy with that I'll trace the outline onto the sticky tape I put down a minute earlier. I've put down some fiberglass reinforced strapping tape and now I'm putting some double sided sticky tape but not too much. I'm also placing it out near the wings because we scalloped the underside of the bridge, as you might recall. Not enough double-sided tape and the bridge moves around. Too much and it's really hard to get off without damaging the soundboard. Then we just place the bridge in between the lines that we have just traced. These C-clamps 
which I've since thinned down at the end here, uh, used to be how I attached the soundboard and the back to the sides before I got the go bar deck. What I'm about to do is drill through the holes in the bridge to make indentations in the guitar. I don't want to drill holes, just indentations so that a thinner bit will sit in the right place. Now going to drill the bridge pin holes through the body of the guitar holding this sacrificial block underneath the bridge plate so that the exit wounds will be as clean as possible. There's a bit of fuzz, but no major tear out. I've just used the reamer to open up the hole so that the bridge pins fit in. The idea is that I should now be able to reposition the bridge without having to use the saddle matic and uh, rulers etc. We'll see if it works. I'm faking this for the camera. The bridge actually came off much more easily than it did last time. This idea to put down the sticky tape was a very good one. Getting the sticky tape off is a bit annoying because you don't want to scratch the soundboard. That's all for now. Join me next time when we will be making a start on some French polishing, but only on one part of the guitar. Cheers. <laughs>